Shenzhen is a marvel of urban planning, which really makes you realize that no matter how good things can get, you're always just gonna adjust to the new baseline. And then little nitpicks really start to add up and just turn you into a cynical mess. This city has literally every possible option for getting around, all of them good. The subway is fast, clean, and goes literally everywhere. The network is so extensive that if you buy a house that doesn't have a subway stop within walking distance, why would you do that? You could even take a high-speed train just across the city. That would be really expensive though and totally not worthwhile. Don't do that. You can drive, but parking is just as bad as it is in New York and getting a license is super expensive and cars are super expensive. Not worth it. And why would you drive when there are way better options? Like taking a taxi. They're everywhere, easy to find, but you'll get a smoke car like 65% of the time. Taxi drivers aren't allowed to smoke in their cars, but that just means they're gonna smoke heavily when no one else is in the car. As if the smell doesn't stick to everything. You can take a self-driving taxi. Uh, no, you can't, unless you're Chinese. The beta doesn't allow foreigners. The bus system is available everywhere, and every route is well stocked with electric buses. It's insanely cheap, and they run at almost all hours of the day. Then there's biking. This city was meant for biking. Dedicated bike lanes protected by either metal partitions or a row of trees, and bikes rarely get stolen. So let's compare. We're gonna do this route here to SeaWorld. No, not the theme park. It's just a, you know, popular do stuff and eat stuff area. We're gonna take a look at convenience, speed, cost, and number of nitpicks, with one being smooth sailing, and 10 being, oh, come on. Lowest score wins. All right, bus, here we go. We're actually going this way though. First up is the bus. Out of any place to take the bus is probably the best. I still hate it. Reading the bus charts is impossible. Not because I don't read Chinese, but just because I so rarely take above ground transport that I don't know any of the street names, so I don't know where anything is. But luckily, we have smartphones. I think it's kind of funny that the SeaWorld bus station is called SeaWorld Metro Station because you're taking a bus to the metro. How come the metro station isn't called SeaWorld Bus Station? Well, it took longer than usual, was not that comfortable, didn't smell terrible, and only cost 1.4 RMB. So convenience, we're gonna go with a three. There's stations everywhere and the buses are frequent, but there's something inherently unsatisfying about standing on the road waiting next to traffic. Speed, that's a six. Not as fast as driving, not as long as walking. There's too many stops though, so it's just gonna take longer. Cost, basically free, so that's a one. Nitpicks, too many stops, the stop and go makes me car sick, and it's not fast enough, that's a three. Bus total, 13. All right, I'm stupid and forgot to charge my camera, so I only have a few minutes of recording time. So what I'm gonna do is take a taxi today. We'll see how long that takes, let's go. Finding one is easy, but you can also use the Maps app and conveniently hail from any of the available services all at once. In China, no tipping, so that makes it really cheap. And the only difference between hailing a taxi and ordering one on the app is that you're a bit less likely to get a smoke car if you go through the app since people care a bit more about their own cars. But for the sake of comparison, I'm gonna take one off the street. Convenience, that's a one. 
Really can't get any more convenient than this. Yeah, this is gonna end up being way faster than the other two, but only because of the Cost. This is China. So even though it's the most expensive option, it was only 27 RMB. That's like $3.70. But still, compared with the other options, that's a six. Speed. Two with no traffic, but if this were a different day, it'd be definitely a five with traffic for an average of 3.5. Nitpicks. Even if the car doesn't smell like smoke, it's generally just not gonna smell very good. It's always a risk that you're gonna get a car that smells horrible. Plus the added car sickness from traffic and the stop and go being foreign, the driver often wants to talk to you and ask the same small talk questions Why that everyone else always asks, going? which can get annoying. And due to drivers having to drive 21 hour shifts quite frequently, this is definitely the most dangerous option. Four. Taxi total, 14.5. I am car sick, but that could be because I was staring at a camera on my phone the whole time. So, can't really blame it on the taxi. Next up is the subway. The closest station to my apartment is down this road and over here. It's about an eight minute walk or a three minute run. Stations are well kept up and clean, but they're so good that everyone takes them. The rush hour subway jam is not really very pleasant. There's not always a subway around, but most of the time, there is. There's fewer stations than the bus, but most places that you're going and coming from will have a station. Convenience, four. Speed, always reliable, always the same amount of time. Cost, not as cheap as the bus, but still only cost about four RMB, depending on how far you go. That's like 55 cents. Nitpicks. People haven't quite totally learned to be respectful on the subway, so if you frequently have to listen to someone blasting TikTok videos at full volume, that can get pretty annoying. During rush hour, the crowd can be sweaty and annoying as well, so two. Subway total, 13. Finally, I don't own a bike, so we're doing bike share. No bikes near me. It's gonna take a little bit longer. The amount of time this takes is absolutely gonna depend on whether or not I get a bike right away or if I have to walk and go find a bike. So let's see how my luck is today. Biking to SeaWorld. Here we go. The first problem here is gonna be finding a bike. Hey, I might get super lucky here because I think that's a bike right there. Depending on where you are, there might be like 10 billion and there might be absolutely zero. Check out when you that need luck. it the most, it's always the latter. And when you don't, you can't take this bike. the former. For whatever reason, I think it's broken. I'm not sure. No other bikes in the whole area. Bike lane, no bikes. There we go, right over there. The biggest issue with biking is that even though the city is set up incredibly well for biking, there's always construction in your way. If there's a crack in the sidewalk, you can count on them coming back a week later to redo the whole sidewalk. Which means that some part of the commute will always be blocked with construction, forcing you to ride in the road. Convenience, four. It's definitely a lot more work, but exercise is good for you, and I count that as a convenience boost. Speed, almost the same amount of time as the bus, but still beat it and got good exercise. 
Six, definitely feel better upon arrival. Cost, 1.5 RMB or free with a 10 RMB per month subscription. Let's just say 20 cents. That's a one. Nitpicks. My bike share video just explains it all. That's one nitpick. One huge nitpick. I realize I complained about the bus not being fast enough and this was only a tiny bit faster, but it's not a motor vehicle mode of transportation, so that doesn't count. Total, 12. All modes of transportation in Shenzhen are good options. Too good. Being back in LA, I would kill for any of the Shenzhen options. But when I'm in Shenzhen, my standards just skyrocket. Any delay is just unacceptable. And yet it never lives up to my unrealistically high expectations. And that's why Shenzhen's public transportation is a pain in the ass. Bring people, you know.